Okay, so now that we're going to add um, some contrast to our guy, I'm going to start making copies of him. So I have this one copy so far, and I'm going to actually um, just start working on the brightness and contrast and curves. Brightness and contrast is a tool I'm sure y'all have already kind of figured out a little bit. It adjusts your brightness and your contrast. So contrast is a term that is used for the high or low differentiation between having lights and dark areas. In our figure here, he has a high contrast between light or in dark areas when I move the arrow to the far right on the screen. If I pull it to the left, you can see that it becomes more muted. So we want it to be high contrast, and I actually am going to make him darker a little bit so we can see more of the wood grain texture. Now I'm going to go to my curves. Curves is similar to the brightness and contrast in the fact that it adjusts your contrast. We're going to adjust the curve of our color profile. So I'm going to pull down to make this darker and pull this one up to add higher contrast. Do you see the direction we're going in? I can even make this fairly extreme. I'm wanting this kind of grainy texture that's being created between this contrast to be, cre and to be well defined. So you can see kind of what our curves do. So maybe right in there. We have some black, black areas, which is perfect for what we're doing. And we'll zoom in, and you can see this texture that we were trying to get. Now I'm going to make a copy again, and we're going to start we're going to do the same thing, but not to the same extreme. Because this is going to be the one that really has that texture. So once I get him to a better place um, with a little bit more contrast, I'm going to actually open what is known as the filter gallery. So you click on your tab filter and come down to filter gallery right here and it'll bring this window up. I have so many options here and the look we're looking for is that screen printed stamped look. Kind of like how Andy Warhol's black edges seem in his pop art. So I like the stamp tool here but because of my colors I left on right here, it didn't show. Let's try that again. Make sure your colors that are used in your palette are black and white for this. So let's try that one more time. Filter gallery. I like opening them all so I can just scroll through it. I'm using command minus or control minus and control plus to zoom out by the way you can also click the buttons down here in your bottom left corner so there we go on the stamp you can see that we get this really great dark black area um we're trying to get more of the art pop art look and we want to define his edge as well. So I'm thinking, I like the texture, but I don't know if I need as much of it. And pull in a little more of the black, but not too much of it. What do you think about that? Yeah, it's not too shabby. On this layer, I now have white and black, as you can see. And I'm going to come in and actually go to select color range and we are going to select all of the white. So we don't want any of this white. 
And now that I have it selected, I'm just going to hit my delete or my backspace key and get rid of it. Okay, let's put that above the layer that we had that is high contrast and start playing with it now. So this high contrast layer is looking more pop art because it's orange and red, but it's not what we want still. I'm going to go up here to my image adjustments and go down to black and white or desaturate. The difference between black and white and desaturate is black and white. I click on it. It comes up with a menu and I actually can adjust this to where I can get rid of that yellow all the way if I want by making it white and I can actually darken my reds. The desaturate option does not give you any color adjusting options. It just does whatever it thinks it needs to do. So I kind of like the idea of adjusting this so we can get that little kind of textured area in there. Um, it can be medium to dark and I think that looks about like what we're needing for this. He looks great. Little <laughs> desaturated guy. Okay, so on this um, step there's an important thing that we need to focus on. Uh, we need to make sure that we keep one version of him that's still fully intact. I'm going to um, go ahead and just like the other layer, I'm going to remove the white from this layer so we can actually start adding colors underneath that'll show through. So we have the white selected and I'm just going to hit the delete key on my keyboard to get rid of it and we see our character underneath. Okay, so this is the fun part. Um, if it wasn't fun already, we're going to make a copy again of our fella. <clears throat> I'm going to select all on this layer. If I hit my arrow keys, um, like one up and one down, it will click um, my selection to my guy. And that's really the easiest way to just select everything on this layer. So I'm going to... <clears throat> With this layer selected, I'm going to um, paint inside the selection to have a solid layer, solid color layer. So I don't know what color, uh, maybe a turquoise, something bright, something fun. And I'm going to use my paint bucket tool, which likes to hide under my gradient tool. Oh. Control Z, and I'm going to paint inside of it. So there's two things I can do here. As you can see, if I just click, it's just going to paint in sections of him. At this point, I'm hitting Control Z or Command Z to go back a few steps. You could also go into your history panel. But I can also, by just hitting the delete key, oh, no, don't do that, I forgot. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, I know the the hot key for it. I totally am blanking on how to keep the selection. Well, I'll just make a new layer with that selection created. I can just paint inside that layer, and then just not use the layer that he is on. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so now we're looking at this. And there's there's some mess in here. You can see the white. It doesn't look that great. All of the little speckles. So um, the last step I want to do in this video, and then we'll discuss how to colorize them further in the next video. I want to make a selection of both of these layers, and I want to make sure that they are multiply layers. So you can see that that made a big difference. Uh, one other thing, if you're making your selection of your guy and you want it to be stylized like Marilyn Monroe's lips, feel free to do that. I mean, it would have been great if 
Um, I had thought of something clever or quirky to do with his outline, but I'm just doing a quick demo, so I'm sorry that it's just going to be plain little art, dude. Alrighty, next video we are going to discuss how we're going to add color and then how to make it a four, uh, make, a, make a spread with all four of our artboards.